Hey, it's Plumber Tom. Don't forget to check in the comments below for a link where you can find additional resources like practice tests and courses you can take. Your support helps me to be able to create more great content. Thanks for watching. Hey, welcome back to this presentation of Unit 35 from Mathematics for Plumbers and Pipe Fitters. My name is Thomas, and in this video presentation, we're going to move on to sample problem three. But let me ask, before we do, how are you doing? You feeling the stretch? Did you make it through those exercises? There were exercise problems based on sample problem one and two that you could do so that you'll have a little more experience. If you haven't done those, don't watch this video yet. I need you to go and do those first so that you have the experience and this is solid in your mind because we're going to move forward into some stuff that's even more awesome. And this is going to add to your capacity to think geometrically. Uh, maybe you did do the exercises and you came through kind of hating them or hating this whole unit. And as I said before, I'm not going to ask you to like this math but I am going to ask you to do it. And hating on it isn't going to help you get through it any easier. So if you're having negative feelings, set them aside for a minute. Let's push through. Just like exercise, just like me doing push-ups. I don't love the way it feels when I'm doing them, but I know it makes me stronger. And this sort of thinking, even if you don't use jumper offsets in your experience as a plumber, the sort of thinking that it requires to do this is going to make you a better plumber. And if you can see in shapes, when you're installing pipe, I hope you're not just putting it together in a slapstick way. I hope that you can see the geometry. When you're using a 45, when you're using a 90, you can see how these shapes come together. You can use the power of geometric math to speed up the process and increase your accuracy. That's the sort of plumber that I hope that you can be. And that's where we're going from here. Let's do it. Unit 35. Here we have it, the sample problem three, sizing up our opponent. Let's see what this is all about. Similar to last time, we're gonna be figuring out center to center lengths. This time we have J, K, L, across the top, M, and N. And we'll figure these out in a similar pattern as last time. Note that this time J is actually on the center line so that might make things a little bit easier. N on the far side, as we go to the right, is below it. So we'll be adding a little bit there. Let's get started. All right, as we work on figuring out this sample problem three, I'm going to point out that it's all spelled out for you on page 135. Um, it gives you each of the pieces that we're solving for and some of the math that you'll need to solve those. However, as I look through this, They've condensed this onto one page, and some of these, there's very little explanation as to where do these numbers come from, and why are we using them, and how. And <laughs> my goal here is to dispel that fog, and we're going to really look at exactly what they're doing on each of these steps. So again, I strongly encourage you to have your book out, and we'll be looking at these together and I'm going to take you deeper on each uh, to explain how these work. Okay, so let's start off as usual with our secondary square. Can you see there what we need to be doing with that? We have a diameter of 10. So diameter equals 10 inches. All right, so we got to figure out our radius from the diameter. That's the next step, right? We're going to take the radius. And that's half of 10. So we know we've got five inches there for the circle. The spacing from the outside of the circle to the center line of pipe is going to be three inches. And that's what we're trying to maintain all the way around. 
Now, it, it gets a little bit more spaced out when it hits those 45s at the top. But generally, we're looking at from center line on either side and then across that, the space between 45s. We're trying to keep that all three inches. So we put those together and you see that on the sample problem, it gives you five plus three equals eight. Eight is our secondary square. That's what we're starting with. All right, next, we're going to go to the diagonal. And that's the diagonal that comes all the way across the top. K is a portion of that, but I want to point out that this diagonal continues to the very top. Even though we're using 45s and kind of short-circuiting that across, we're not going full 90 out, the geometry exists. The triangle is there. And that's the next thing that we'll calculate is that diagonal it follows along K. It's going to help us with M. But in short, we've got... 2 times 8 equals 16. And that's going to be that length. And that diagonal goes all the way to the very top, completing that triangle. Now, as we are gathering information to be able to solve this, we're going to need to remember, jump back to data table 22, which gives us the constants for 22 and a half degree fittings. And the piece that I pointed out in the last video is that if I know what the rise is, I can multiply the rise by 0 0.414, and that's going to give me the offset. That's the shorter piece. Now, look at this triangle, and let's go back, focus in on the sample problem, and see where that triangle is within the sample problem. Now, as we focus on this, you can see it's actually in there twice. Back to back, it starts at the center of the circle, it spreads out, the rise that we were looking at is actually that center line from the center of the circle to the center of the 45. Do you see those? There's two of them. And then we have the offset. These are short pieces. And those are these little short lines at the top. They're calling it L slash 2 or L divided by 2 because L is the space from 45 to 45. But as we're solving using these 22 degree triangles, we're going to have two of those together. And that's going to equal L. And that's actually a decent place for us to start. So as we follow down the sample problem and we're collecting information, the next thing they have us do is figure out what that L2 is, or half of L. And they start us out with 0 0.414. That's the constant we looked at on the diagram. And we're going to times that by 8. 8 is the number we found for the sides of our secondary square. Also, the distance from the center of the circle to the center of pipe. And that applies also to this center of pipe between the two halves of L. This is the same triangle repeated over, flipped back and forth. But that's the triangle we're dealing with. So as we do the math on that, that's going to give us 3.312 inches. We can convert that into a fractional measurement if we take that point three one two and times it by 16 over 16. Let's see what we, we get there. We're going to get 4.99 or let's call that 5 sixteenths. So 3 and 5 sixteenths is what we'll be working with. Now that's a half of L, but that's going to be useful in another part here. We're going to find a diagonal and this is where it gets kind of vague within the text here because it's like, well, what diagonal are you even talking about? Let's go back to the sample problem. Here's the triangle we superimposed, and it goes up above and beyond the center line of pipes, above L, above everything. But there is another triangle created by that across the top. It is a right triangle with 45 degrees, and we have one of the sides of that. We just figured it out. It's down there at the bottom at 3.312. We can times that by 1.414. That's going to give us a diagonal that comes up across the top. As we do the math on that, we've got 3.312 times 1.414. We're going to get 4.683. We could take it one step farther. Let's figure out what 683 is. We'll multiply that by 16 over 16. Point 0.683 times 16 equals 
10.9, basically 11. Let's round to 11, 11 sixteenths. So that would also equal 4 and 11 sixteenths. Now that's going to be useful for us as we start into solving. Let's go there. Solve for k. So as we look to solve for the center to center of k, that's going from 45 to 45. Remember from our secondary square, we figured out the square is 8. And the diagonal from that 45 all the way to the top of a, the triangle above L is 16. We've calculated that earlier. We can take that 16, but we need to subtract a piece that goes up to the very top of that triangle. And that's what we just figured out. It is that 4 and 11 sixteenths. That's the missing diagonal that we shortcut when we turn the 45. So when we do that math, 16 minus 4 is 12 minus 11 sixteenths. That's going to leave us with 5 sixteenths. Now, if you look closely in the book on K where they solved it, they accidentally typed that out to be 9 sixteenths. But up in the answer key, they do have it as 5 sixteenths. Once again, please excuse the editing errors in the mathematics for plumbers and pipe fitters. Oh boy. Next, we'll solve for L. And L, we've already done most of the work for because we've done half of that, right? The L slash 2. We calculated that to be 3.312. So basically, we just have to times that by 2. We have 3.312 times 2. It's going to give us 6.624. If we take that 0.624, times it by 16 over 16, let's get that over into sixteenths of an inch. 0.624 times 16, it's going to give us 9.9, .9, basically 10, 10 sixteenths of an inch, or we can reduce that to 5 eighths. So ultimately there we get six and five eighths of an inch. That is going to be L. Next, let's have a look at M. M goes from the top 45 at L down past the center line of the circle to the 45 that uh, straightens it out parallel to the center line. So here we have M. There's one part of this we've already figured out when we did K. Uh, from the center of the 45 to the center of the circle, we calculated that out to be 11 and 5 sixteenths. But there's a piece that goes down past that, where it goes beyond center line. And if we look at the diagram off to the right side, it's a 2-inch difference. So we need to be able to figure what to add onto this diagonal as it continues past center line. And we'll just use our triangle math, right? To figure that out, we would take 2 times 1.414. Let's pull that up here. 2 times 1.414 is going to give us 2.828 inches. Now let's convert that over into our fractions. 0.828 times 16 over 16. That's going to give us 13, and it's a little bit more, but we're going to leave it at 13 sixteenths. So basically, um, what we need to add to that is 2 and 13 sixteenths. That's going to give us M. I'm going to pause here and point out there's another math error here. <laughs> Uh, they converted that and got similar 13 16s, but they wrote 23. So uh, under M, it's 2 and 13 16, not 23 and 13 16. Please excuse the editing errors in mathematics for plumbers and pipe fitters. How many times do I have to say this? Oh, I should write the editor. All right, anyway. If we add 11 and 5 sixteenths and 2 and 13 sixteenths, we're going to come up with 13 and, what is that, 18 sixteenths. 
We can reduce that fraction, right? We'll take 16 over 16 out of there. That would make it 14 and 2 sixteenths. Or we can reduce 2 sixteenths, 14 and 1 eighth. That's accurate. That's M. Our measurement for M, 14 and 1 eighth. Let's jump back over and solve for J. When we're looking at J, we need to go back to our secondary square, which was 8. We take that 8 inches, and we're going to multiply that by 1.414 to get this diagonal that comes across from the bottom. It's from the center of the circle to the center of the 45. If we figure that diagonal out, we can subtract it from the overall at the bottom. You'll see the overall from the center of the 90 on the far left to the center of the circle is 20 inches. We can subtract that from 20, and away we go. Let's figure out what that is then. 8 times 1.414 is going to give us 11.31. If we take that 0.31 times it by 16 over 16 to get us into fractions of an inch. It's going to give us 4.99 or 5 sixteenths. So we end up with 11 and 5 sixteenths. That's just a piece of it, right? It's the part that we would subtract from the overall across the bottom. So we take our 20 inches minus 11 and 5 sixteenths inches. 20 minus 11 is 9. We'll take off another 5 sixteenths. That's going to give us 8 and 11 sixteenths for J. That's our J. To solve for M, we need to recognize that the center line of pipe comes down past the center line of the circle by 2 inches. So we'll need that information. Also, pay attention to the fact that from the center of the circle to the center of the 90 on the far right side, is 30 inches. That's a good starting place. 30 inches, and we're going to subtract a few things from that. Let's subtract what we already know. When we figured out J, we solved that distance from the center of the circle to the center of the 45. That's going to be the same on the other side of this circle as it intersects M. That's not where the fitting ends up, but that gives us a piece of it. And that was 11 and 5 sixteenths. But there's also a 2 inch difference from the center line to center line. Zoom in here and we see that triangle. That same right triangle we're always dealing with, 45 degrees. If the one side is 2 inches, that's center to center on our lines, the other side is also 2 inches. And that's the difference that we need to add as we're coming over. It's a simple two. What I'm going to do is put those in parentheses, the two pieces that we have to subtract. 30 minus 11 and 5 sixteenths plus 2. That's going to be 30 inches minus 13 and 5 sixteenths inches. 30 minus 13 is going to be 17 minus 5 sixteenths. That'll leave us with 16 and 11 sixteenths. And there we have N. So there you have it, Unit 35, Sample Problem 3. We have really dissected that thing, and hopefully that helps you and improves your understanding. Time now for you to move on to the last couple of exercises using what we've talked about, using what you've learned. See if you can finish off the exercises for Unit 35. You're doing great. I'll see you in the next presentation.